Okay, so this is the watercolor landscape part one. The really good thing to do is to have your image with you. Now the image we're using is on the LMS, uh, but it's always a good idea to just keep it nearby. Now I'm gonna be using a collection of paints. I'm probably gonna be using this palette just because my tiny palette's all filled up. So just for mixing. And I'm just gonna be using my uh, travel paints because I don't feel like uh, pulling out all of my other ones. All right. So what I have is, oh sorry, are my paint brushes. I have my water over here. I need a cloth that I can wipe the paint off on because sometimes you're gonna to need to work with a dry brush. So I've got that. And at that point, I'm pretty much good to go. The big thing though is you constantly have to reference the picture. So the picture you're working from. <clears throat> now, watercolor, just like any other painting, works from the back front. So you always start with the background and then you always move to the front. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to lock in our pencils. So in order to do that, you make a wash. In this case, because my scene is kind of a fall scene, I'm gonna do ochre for the bottom, for the middle ground and foreground, and I'm gonna do a gray for the background. So in order to do that, I put some water, obviously on my palette. I take my ochre, which is this kind of goldy brown, and I'm gonna mix it. Now, I want a good amount of paint here because this is gonna cover my entire thing. Okay, always have your tester sheet or a little corner that you can test it. So that's pretty good. Um, what I'm gonna do now is take my paintbrush, you just mostly get the biggest one you have, and go over everything. Okay, if it is too bright, meaning like, it's really bright yellow. Uh, this is a little bright, but I'm going uh, stronger so that you can see it. So if it's a super bright yellow, please tone it down. You wanna water it down. The only thing that this is doing is providing a background color and it is also locking in your pencils. So once you do this, you cannot erase your pencils anymore. They are in there. This is also where your, paint, uh, your paper might start to get a little wobbly. If it is, you're using too much water. That's why I'm going in long strokes. Okay, I don't want to soak each individual page. Okay, long strokes. It doesn't need to be perfectly done. One stroke is enough and you're gonna cover your entire painting. Try not to smudge your pencils too much, uh, just because graphite is a pain in the butt to get off. And what this is actually called, there's a name for it, it's called your ground layer. Now, if you're painting with acrylics or oils, you do this as well. And it is a colored layer that makes the colors that go over top of it more vibrant. And you try to use it to match the colors that you already have. So if you look right now, I don't know if you're noticing, but my paper is starting to lift. There is another very easy way to stop this and I'll show you as soon as I'm done. Okay, so now I've colored all the areas that are gonna be ochre, ochre, and now the sky and the road I know do not have yellow in them. So what I'm gonna do is make another wash and I'm gonna use gray. So if you have a black, you're gonna put just the tiniest amount in, okay? You do not want this dark. It should be like that. It is such a light gray that it should be kind of hard to see. But you're just doing it to lock in those pencils and to give it a base color. We're gonna be painting on top of it.
so that is down. I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit. Okay, so here is the fun part. What you are going to do next is called color blocking. And again, you're going to use a wash. So you're going to look at the colors on your picture and you're going to try and mix them as much as you can, but you're going to go with something very, very light. So don't try to do any details. The green is a very vibrant, bright green. I'm going to go with a very, very pale green. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to create a wash for it. Okay, so it's just a little bit of green. I'm going to test it. I need it more green. Test it. That's better. And then I'm just going to block in that color. So everywhere that is green is going to get a layer of this. Not in any way that is refined or perfect, but just put down. Try to avoid painting on top of other things. So I have the rocks here. I'm going to use the side of my brush. So this is a flat head brush. I'm going to use the side of that brush to try and maintain that the rocks do not have green on them. Okay. You might have to mix more paint. You just keep going. And again, you're using a wash. So it should be a pretty thin color. You're not putting any strong colors down yet. That's for later. And remember what I said before, sometimes your paper is going to get too wet. Now this is okay to work wet on wet for this because we're not doing any detailed work. So I'm not really scared that it's going to, you know, die. But I am going to try to work on different areas. So anywhere that is green, this thing I think is a dark green. This layer goes down and I'm going to work in a circle. So I started here. I'm going to come around. I forgot this. I'm going to do this because if I keep working in that same direction, so I think I'm working anti-clockwise, then this area hopefully will be pretty dry by the time I need to go back to it. So it just kind of gives me a solid idea of which areas are dry, which areas are wet and where I've like already painted. Okay, I'm not going to do the areas, the detailed areas like my uh, trees or anything that's like crazy detailed yet. Again, this is all just the very, very basics. So at this point, I have done my wash and I have done my color blocking. I'm going to give it a couple minutes to dry and then we will come back and I'll do the next part.